We welcome all the Sri Mahans, Mahans, Kotharis, Tanedars, devotees, disciples, Balasans, visitors, and viewers to this Vakyartha Sadas conducted by Balasans of Nityananda Gurukul. Today's topic for the Vakyartha Sadas is hard power and soft power. Today Swami is speaking about hard power and soft power. So what is soft power? Soft power is uh, all decisions and everything you take through, through inspiration. Any decisions and everything you do through inspiration is what I feel is soft power. Just adding a point, it's basically the spiritual decisions which you make in your life. Can you give an example? For an example for soft power, it is like, for example, you can take Buddha's life. In Buddha's life, Buddha never like controlled people to listen to his teachings or anything like that. Just through the, by his living, he created the inspiration in everyone just to follow Buddhism. Can you say it from your experience? In my life, Swamiji, just by his soft power and his like such great inspiration he radiates, just by his inspiration, I just left whatever like um, I used to like do in the outer world, and I decided I'll be with Swamiji. Any decision you make in your life, is it just based on hard power or soft power? See, it is based on the context from which you take the decision. Like how we told, taking from a spiritual context, it is a soft power. What do you mean by spiritual context? Like, I'll just answer your previous question. Like, every decision you take, see, our life is full of decisions. So every decision you take, either you decide to sleep or whatever it might be, taking the decision from a soft power or hard power is what is matters. So your whole life runs whether you decide based on hard power or soft power. For example, suppose in Gurukul we have a rule that we cannot shout at anybody. If you are not shouting at anybody or if you are not hitting somebody from the space because it is a rule, because it is a rule and law and all that, you are not doing it, then that is from hard power. But the same if you do it out of the uh, feeling that everyone is a part of me, 
what is the need for me to hurt somebody why should i be violent that is soft power for the pre previous question you you answered that everything ajara maraj an answered that everything which inspires you right so whatever inspires you can be a soft power that's what you said so even inspiration for the wrong things can be the, uh, from a right context what do you mean by inspiration for wrong things could you give an example of what do you mean by wrong things for example mm, okay when i was there uh, i had like when i saw my friends going to parties celebrating parties and they seeing some violent movies and all i used to feel like oh that's great and i used to feel inspired so something that but it's not expansive so it's a wrong thing right so then is it that's what her example from what you told what i understood was more than you feeling inspired you feel left out that all of them are watching why i am not watching i should also go and watch along with them i won't call it inspiration i would call what your example as what you told something which you missed out the why are they all watching i also want to go and watch i won't i wouldn't call that inspiration by deciding from hard power or from soft power where does it take us does it take us to an ultimate space what i feel is any decision you take anything you do ultimately like brings you the space of advaita and enlightenment so anything you do brings you the space of ultimate like how we just um learnt in yesterday's satsang yesterday's vakyartha sadas that it is just basically deciding for soft power immediately will immediately take you to the space of ultimate where whereas when you decide for hard power it will still take you to the space of ultimate but the time is more what if a person has they decided that li their life is for money and they're going on from the greed of getting money more and more and more when at the middle they get a click so it from hard power it leads to soft power right so how can you tell that hard power will take longer time see you told that um if they are greedy for money they'll run their life wanting for more and more money <coughs> but in one point of their rise of their life they'll realize that they don't need the money they won't feel greedy for the money and they'll realize and they'll run their life by soft power so that's what sundaresh maharaj meant by it'll take longer time so when you run by hard power at one point of life you will know that what you're doing is wrong and you will continue in life with soft power so i'll just take a longer time in hard power how can a common person decide like any person just decide and start living that so soft power how is it possible what do you mean by soft power it's the inspiration which comes right so now take an example of anybody how is the decision that they make like how will they know yes for this this is the thing your question isn't clear can you explain your question more uh, uh can you make your question more clear with a proper example
um, telling her question clearly. See, we know now that soft power leads to enlightenment quicker compared to hard power. But for a normal outer world person, they're mostly driven by fear and greed. So how can they come to the understanding that it's soft power which leads us to enlightenment quicker? See, what I feel is it's based on what you decide and the way you're groomed. And also, if you take Buddha as an example, he never knew what is software till one part of one point of his life. Only when he saw the world, he understood that this is not the way I should live. So he just woke up to the reality, which is everything is delusion. That's how he woke up to the reality. So for a common person, it can be like that. Like he might enjoy everything at and at one point of his life, he might feel whatever I did till today is all waste because I'm not expanding my spiritual growth in any form. So that might awaken him to follow the uh, soft power. And as Swamji told in today's satsang, tirelessly deciding for something again and again is what is the most important and will lead you to the space of soft power. Like how Swamji told, it is not about whether something is right or wrong. But it is about from which context you do it. Like how Swamji told in today's satsang that when a person is doing something, like today there was a question raised, like telling that why do so many bad people be rich and they are healthy while good people are still poor and not rich and not healthy. So the understanding which we came up to, which I understood is that it is completely the person whom we consider as bad has no incompletion or no obstacle for his thinking what his life is. As Swamiji told, you being aligned to the idea of what you believe as life, you aligning yourself again and again to the idea of what you believe as life is deciding for life. So at that point, even when the bad person decided, yes, I, this is money is my power, my life is money at this point. So I am deciding for it. So the decision which he makes is what is the most important thing. And adding to what Sundresh Maharaj told, <coughs> if you take the life incident of Harishchandra, King Harishchandra, if you see <coughs> at first his kingdom was been removed from him, then his wife, and uh, at last he himself was working for someone as a slave. And finally his child himself was been, his child was killed. So in that case, in all this situation, he only decided for his life. What his, he took his life as dharma. And he's only living based on his, based on dharma. Whatever is dharma, he only lived on that. And if you, so only because of that, it, it, would ma it made him expanded and whatever he, whatever he lost from his life, he got the whole thing back. Um, I have a question from my own experience, which um, I need a little help with. See, for me, um, I know that soft power leads to enlightenment quicker, but that, and that's by inspiration. But even when some inspiration is given, it's just short term. Like, I quickly forget about it, and then I'm driven more by fear and greed. So um, how do I come to the understanding that it's only inspiration? How do I um, feel inspired? See, for me, whatever I feel from my experience, for me, whenever I come to a problem like this, I just make that cognition strengthen in me. Like that small inspiration can be inspiration for a short time. But if you live that properly, and if you decide that more strongly in your life, I feel it will become long term. For me, in, li in my life, if I decide for it more strongly, it helps me. What do you mean you live that properly? means dropping all your SDHT which you have with that component and which, see, when you get that understanding, when you get that inspiration in your life, if you get some SDHT with that, slowly that inspiration will go down and you'll be unable to decide for life. So if you bring down the SDHT and if you decide that more strongly in your life and if you keep on remembering that same inspiration again and again, I feel that 
short term inspiration will become long term how do you bring down the hdhd and make your inspiration more stronger like for example if shivoham gives you like um it gives you inspiration the moment you utter shivoham remember that you are shiva it gives you inspiration so when you're in low moods like you like you start saying that shiva will not be in low mood but i'm in low mood so i don't believe in shivoham so when you're in the space of shivoham just strengthen the cognition in you so like start bringing sh- that shivoham inspiration in every part of your life so even in the low mood you'll remember shivoham get back to the space of inspiration is inspiration something internal or external what i feel is it can be both together like you can find inspiration within you and you can find inspiration outside you also like you see swami ji and he is an inspiration for you and then you look in yourself you feel you have to get to the space of shivoham and that is also an inspiration for you so it can be both i feel from my experience that inspiration is basically which comes from inside you only when a person who is completely inspired when he when you come into a contact or a space or a communication with him that only the person who is inspired will be able to awaken that part of inspiration which is in you so you also will be inspired just because like how swami ji told if a person if a robber will be attracted to a bigger robber a person who wants to be in completion will be attracted to a person who wants to be in more completion and who is in completion same way when you really want to get into the space of inspiration the other person's inspiration because he's already inspired when you go to him that part of you which wants to live like you want to be inspired to live advaita so when we go to swami ji at that time because he is embodiment of inspiration that time even we go that part of inspiration in us also gets awakened so like that for any specific activity like if you are going for suppose a tennis player a tennis player will be inspired by a person who is a, a greater tennis player so it all depends on which level and which thing you belong to like whatever you belong to you'll be inspired by that person but what i feel is from the example you gave it is still from outside because you see somebody you are that part is getting awakened in you it is want to be directly from inside it is it is not that you feel like going to that person just because you saw you feel it awakened in you okay so what you told i don't think it's this just because you saw him you are going to him. i will i will only i will only still say is what you want you get it so in that case if you want to be a great tennis player so only attract a person who is much more than you in a tennis in a, in a tennis player level if you want to if you want to be in the space of completion i w- i will only i will only say that you attracted him so that you got him in your life what you want is what you get that's what i would say but from my experience i never i didn't even have an idea about what is completion or anything before coming to gurukul or before meeting swami ji then how was i attracted to swami ji because i didn't even have a thought of having completion or even how much of a powerless i became i i felt okay this is how it is supposed to be then how is it related to what were you told so much is told many times in his satsang it isn't that you chose him it is because he chose you you are here now <laughs> only if he wants you to be here now you will be here if that is a the case then what do you mean uh, like he told what you attract is what you get then we never attracted it so swami is deciding then how was how are we getting that inspiration so again your statement means inspiration is external only right 
okay if you listen to swami ji when it in this recent jayanti swami ji told because all of us gave a missed call to shivan pass but that's why we are all here at this time if you if you know this we 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 did give we did had the purpose of we did ha attracted it that's why we got we came to here right now okay i have a doubt can please explain what is hard power okay um hard power is basically taking decisions out of fear and greed so it's basically like political power and what i feel as hard power is just getting everything to your control just controlling everything that is what i feel as hard, hard power what do you mean by telling getting everything into your control without giving you the right understanding or anything just want it to be under you you think that i am the doer but actually you are not the doer but you think i am the doer i want everything to be under me and everything just controlling everything around you could you give an example of a hard power okay like as sundar shamara jardi said like fall we have rule uh, rule in gurkul that we should not shout at anyone but following that rule because it is a rule is hard power how can you tell you are keeping something under your control when everything is running by the will of cosmos what i understood by her statement is you thinking that you are controlling something that's what i understood by the statement she made you thinking that you are controlling you thinking you are the doer our understanding can you tell in a clear way okay i'm telling um what i think um hard power is like um when you think you're in control of everything and everyone has to listen to you without giving them a right context of what what um why they're doing what they're doing without telling them that exactly just expecting them to follow you because you think you're in, like you're um you're doing everything because you think that a practical example like how in an outer world school in a normal outer world school a teacher tries to control get her control over the kids by putting fear by hitting so that is hard power that's how that's the way i understand hard power uh, what i understand as hard power is uh, uh, from my ex- uh, from my experience well uh, before i used to feel that uh, no one's listening and just because of that powerlessness which i had inside i try to control people outside because i i was not strong inside and i was powerless i started controlling outside i i think that hard power is that just uh, feeling powerless inside empty inside and con- try to control outside so do you mean by saying that hard power is something which we shouldn't do in our life is is it something wrong or bad i don't think that it 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 um it is bad because in a way it helps us reach to the soft power which le- which helps us lead us to the ultimate so i can't say exactly it is bad how how can the hard power lead you, lead you to soft power okay so from my i'll tell from my experience before coming to gurukul i used to think that um everything should go my way if it doesn't go my way i should cry then only things will happen but when when i heard that my brother was living such a life in gurukul that he that he he was inspired by him uh, he was inspired by the way gurukul kids were living i felt that um, being the doer itself and thinking whatever i want in life is not is not the right thing so it brought me to the understanding that i have to live spiritually so i came to gurukul adding a point to what she said shakti dara already told like um 
when you're you, even if you're living um, by hard power, at one point you'll realize that that's not the ultimate, and soft power itself is the one which leads to enlightenment quicker. So at one point you'll realize. Okay. See, Satyam, I told that hard power is controlling people. So uh, what I feel is when you control people, why are you go? Why you? Why will you even feel that is not making us happy? You are controlling people. Everyone is going to listen to you. Whatever you want, you can do through them. Then what is something? Then wha how will you not feel happy in that? And why do? Why will you even move to soft power through that? Because what I think is why you control others, like Ma Deepa already said, is because we are empty inside when we can't control ourselves like we can't control like we try to control others so that we can get control of ourselves and also Swami has told that the way how you handle life life will hold you in the same way like if you handle life by fear then life will also hold you by fear so how will you f feel fulfilled I have a practical question now you're telling somebody something and they're all listening to you will you feel happy you are commanding over them and they are all listening to you. Will you feel happy? Immediately, if you are in that situation, you tell. At that moment, yes. But later, when they, but when you, you will not be able to be friendly with them. Like, they, even though you go, they'll, because you already put your command over them and you held them by fear, they will still be scared of you. You'll not be able to relate with them normally. This is what I feel. You will never handle them with the fr space of friendliness or Advaita. You will just directly, because your power is inside, you'll just start controlling them. Okay. I have a doubt with what Mahadipa said. You said that when you feel empty inside, you try to control things outside. What do you mean by feeling empty inside? feeling belittled like you thinking yourself like low Swamiji said in one of his satsang when you feel that when you feel inside belittled you then that is the time when where you show outside that you're big and you start commanding at people you start just ruling over people unless you feel that you will never do that for example Ravana Ravana felt he was belittled. He had a low inner image about himself. So he tried controlling people. But still at that moment when you're controlling someone, you get that happiness. So what's wrong in that happiness? You still are happy. See, that happiness is just temporary. It won't last long. You might feel happy at that moment. Oh, they're all listening to me. But after some time, you'll realize that that's not the ultimate thing. Because when... When you feel little inside, see, you do all these things only when you feel powerless inside. And later, when people, when you won't be able to relate to people friendlily, how will you feel powerful? It won't last long. Giving an example to what she told, Ajata Shatru, at first, he ha he'll go and conquer so many places, so many kingdoms, yet he'll not feel fulfilled inside. He'll think, I'm doing so much, I'm conquering, but still I'm, yet I'm not feeling fulfilled. But only after he meets Buddha and realizes that soft power part in him and starts living that soft power, he'll feel fulfilled. What do you mean by fulfilled? What I feel is with something which brings you to the space of completion, where you feel that, <clears throat> okay, I am satisfied with what they are, wh what I am doing now. What I feel is completion is, you know, you being in the present, rea the present moment, like whatever is happening now, you're just being with it. Okay, so I, now I have a doubt. Lopamudra told that being empty is like you feel belittled. In that case, when you are in low self-esteem, why will you even go 
uh, why will even go control someone? When you feel low, low, feel low self-esteem, you only feel, Ayyo, they are doing much, I am not able to do. In that case, why will you even go control someone? How can you even control someone in that case? When you feel belittled, you try to project your outer image. No, I shouldn't show this. I think I'm, I'm low. But I don't want to show this part to people. So you try to prove, no, I'm bigger. You try to prove I'm bigger. Swami told in the satsang about Ravana. He took the example of Ravana and explained this. Can you explain it from your experience so that we get it clearly? Okay, I'm, uh, this is my experience. I felt that nobody nobody listens to me, and because I feel that inside, I feel so belittled. Like I don't, I it whatever I wanted to happen ne never happened. That is what I feel, and I feel the belittledness inside. And I started commanding over people. Like you know, I started ruling over people, just ordering them what to do. Once I shifted my cognition that I am not the doer. Swami is the doer, and He lives through me. I'm a, I'm just a tool. I'm just a channel for Him. For him to flow in me, I realized that me feeling belittled and controlling over people doesn't give me any happiness or what I wanted in my life. Okay, now I have a question. Just before some time, you all told if you feel belittled, you'll try controlling people. You feel belittled only because you are unable to control yourself. Then, how can you control others? How will others be able to listen to you when you are unable to listen to yourself? It is not that they are going to listen to you. It is, that it is just that you controlling them. Like You want them to be under you. I'll give you an example. Like when... I thought, oh, nobody listens to me, nobody likes me, so I belittled myself over there. But I started bossing around. So I started like, oh, then I have to prove, no, 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 I, they should like me, so I should have my command over them. So this is the thought I got, and I started bossing around so many people. I started, no, you have to listen to me. I started behaving like that. Just before some time, she told that when you are belittled, you can't control anybody. But at that point, when it comes, when you really speak, okay, when you control them based on fear or greed, they do listen to you, even at that point. Then, even if you are bossing them at that point, they are listening to you, which is the purpose at that moment. Then what is wrong in heart power? At the moment, the what we need is happening. Then what is wrong? But working out of fear for them, is it expansive? It's coveting, right? It's not enriching them, so it's coveting, right? And adding to her point, when we keep doing something out of hard power, we ourselves become insensitive. To what do you become insensitive to? To what I think is that we become insensitive to life itself. What do you mean by life? Um, according to me, life mean life is just like it depends on our perception. It can mean different different things to different people. For example, for me, life is enriching. So, um, so for me, life is enriching. For some people, life might be wealth. So it depends on people. It varies from person to person. According to me. Okay. So Anjana told, uh, being ins you, you will be you will become insensitive to life. In that case, I have a doubt. So when you take decision out of hard power, you mean you'll be, you, you, you will become completely insensitive to life and in that case, how will you move to soft power? When you're insensitive to life, what happens? How will you even move to soft power?
see what i feel is you know like when you when you are really insensitive to life <clears throat> like uh, for for example like for me uh, when i felt uh, be little you know i started commanding others out of fear and greed so people started listening to me listening to me out of that but soon they took over you know you know, uh, they started taking over me thinking that she is just doing it out of greed and fear then why should we listen to her so at that time i got a click that when we take them through fear and greed they won't listen to you after few after few times when you tell them they'll just take advantage of you so at that time life hits you and then you turn into that soft power that you decide that i should speak from the space of completion which is like when they feel that what she's doing is we should be authentic to it i have a question from my life my life is completely being into the space of living advaita that is my life i don't really know what living advaita is what i feel is anything which gives me and others happiness is living advaita that is what i understand now now as you told before life to different people can mean different things it can mean wealth health anything and hard power brings insensitivity to that how is hard power bringing insensitivity to my life that is living advaita what is insensitivity in terms of my life can you give us situation in your life like where you use the hard power so that we'll be able to explain it to you one thing which i felt in my life is that at points not exactly now but then at few times when i go into the space of incompletion i just decide at that point that taking care from the space of soft power will not work hard power will work so when i just take on to the thing like when i shout at people at points then immediately that control comes and they all listen in this how am i insensitivity how am i insensitive to living advaita which is my purpose of life you told for you living advaita is may uh, you and others being happy right but when you shout at people how will you give l- uh, happiness to others now i have a doubt see now our parents what we understand is like according to them whatever they are doing is the best for us sometimes they shout at us so when they are trying to put that hard power on us we are getting hurt but they are not meaning to hurt they are trying to un- make us understand so what is it that they are exactly trying to do is it hard power or is it soft power it is hard power because it is not inspiring the other person and their context from which they do it that act is not really working out because you when your parents shout at you you are going into powerlessness instead of you get feeling inspired but you told that when you are using hard power you become insensitive to life but here your parents are like very sensitive to you so that's why they're trying to expand you what i feel is <coughs> when they shout at you 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 feel hurt but they're still trying to control you out of f- fear right they're still trying to control you by you know shouting at you so i feel is you know like when they do that you know like mm, uh, when they do when they keep doing that they 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 don't um, after a few times they don't bother after that whether we expand or not they just 
they just think that I have to bring them under control. How do I do that? So it's better I shout at them. So they shout at us and then, you know, we just get hurt. No, but for example, now you're not studying. So your parents tell you that if you don't study, no TV for one week. So they're controlling you by hard power. But still your parents are having such a great concern for you to study. So that's why they're removing the TV from you. But still they're having such sensitivity towards your life and towards your studies. So that's why they're doing that. So how is this insensitive to life? What I feel is, the way you perceive, that it avoids meaning every parent are like that, the way you perceive, that's all I feel. What do you mean by the way you perceive? See, so um, he asked, how, how do you mean like, Parents can be even, uh, they can use soft power to adjust. But how do you mean hard power? When you use hard power, it is insensitive to us, okay? So what I felt is, what I felt, that was you, how you perceive the feeling in they're being insensitive to me. Mainly I mean the perception, how you feel. First, the life of the parent, what do, what does that parent think as their life? If, the, if for example, if, okay, take example, my parents, my mother thinks, okay, um, I have to somehow uh, take responsibility, so that is only my life. That's what she, she thinks. So now, when she, and, and uh, she told that, uh, I think my life is for enriching people. So, from that context, when, but when she shouts at any, any uh, if she shouts at me, and at that point, I, I'm going into powerlessness, it's not enriching me, instead it's pulling me down. She's trying to control me out of fear. And if she puts that same greed in me, again it's pulling me down, so it's not enriching me. So that is being insensitive to life, right? But still, the parent is only trying to make you, like, like for in my example, the parent only made the kid study. The ultimate purpose of the parent is for the kid to study and have a better life. So the parent is being sensitive to the kid. How can you tell the parent is being insensitive to the kid? The, the, pa the parent cares about the kid so much. So that's why the parent is removing the TV from the kid and making the kid study. How is this insensitivity? Even though the parent is shouting, but still ultimate the purpose is for you to get enriched. When, when uh, parents put only fear, it'll avoid, for everyone it'll avoid uh, getting, they'll avoid understanding what their parents are trying to do. Because for different people, life means something. But for, for, for a person, for, uh, for a kid who wants to help his parents, who really wants to understand, who, who really wants to understand what their parents are trying to tell, even if they tell, even if you tell through fear or something, they can understand. But for few people, they avoid caring about it. Mm, adding to our point, what I feel is even though the context from which the parents tell is right, they care about the kid so they tell the kid. But even though that's right and that's for the expansion of the kid, they're insensitive to the fact that by putting fear and greed, the kid will later suffer. That's what I think. Today, Swami spoke about karma, right? So in that, he, what I understood from what he told us, any act you do against what you think as life and any act you don't do about what you think as life is karma. Is that what he defined? Can you, or can you explain what is karma exactly? 
Can you please explain the question in a more clear way? What is karma? Okay, karma is that which binds you. Is, it, is, is, is something like your commission or omission of certain action which is, which is incomplete to the concept of your life or your cognition of your life. That's what I feel is karma. Okay, can you explain what is commission and omission with example? So all of us will be clear in what does that mean. My understanding of omission and commission is like, suppose at this point I'm going for gardening. Okay, in Gurukul I'm doing some gardening. It is break time for me and I'm gardening. At that moment, I'm doing it. Then suddenly it's time for next thing to come about. Suppose I'm shifting a plant into another pot. In the way, on the way, my mentor comes and tells it's time for class. Please move to the class. So, at that point, if the omission at that point is, I have to leave this thing, I have to leave gardening, and then go to studying, which is adding something to me, like moving to the next step. At that point, if I'm incomplete, that, oh, how can I do it? I cannot do this, the plant will die. If I'm getting into that incompletion, that brings karma. But if I'm doing it from the space of completion, like I tell my mentor, just hold on for a few minutes, I'll put this plant in the pot and then I'll come to the class. If I do it from completion, that will not bring karma to me. So this is what I understand as commission and omission. I have a question. In this example, what you told, what is commission and what is omission? I didn't understand. What I understand as omission and commission is, like at this point I'm doing something. If I have to move on to the next activity, I have to leave this aside, means I have to drop this, and then move on to the next activity, which is adding. Like I'm commission, like getting things into my life. Like I have to move to the next action of my life. I cannot just be stuck with this at this point. I'm leaving this, I'm omitting this, and then moving on to the next, which is I'm taking in, which is like commission. That's what I understand as commission and omission. So do you mean to say that omission is just like, um, l suppose you take up some responsibility, you're saying that just leaving it and going away, is that what you mean? Can you give another example and explain clearly? I didn't actually get what you told. Okay. So first thing I want to make it clear that to my understanding, our whole life is filled with omissions and commissions. Okay, so now every action you do, like now we are having Vakyartha Sadas. Next we have to move on to the next activity. It might be having the next completion session which we have in Gurukul. Now at this point when we move on to the next activity, I'm not telling just leaving this in the middle. Like when we are having the Vakyartha Sadas, just walking out of the hall. I don't mean that. I am, when I tell that this is over, this part of our responsibility of this at this point is done when we have to move to the next action of our life. Like we are leaving this, omitting this, and then moving on to the next, which is commission. That time not being incomplete, like due to the side effects of what happened. Suppose 
I have a feeling, oh God, I did not speak properly today and all that. And not being incomplete about all that and still being in the space of completion and moving on to the next activity of your life is what I understand as omission and commission. When we are complete and move ahead, we don't accumulate karma. When we are incomplete about something which happened and we are moving on to the next activity, it brings karma in us. I have a question. See, is uh, commission and omission related to responsibility? If yes, can you explain? And even now, I really didn't understand what is exactly commission and exactly omission. See, as Sundareshwara Maharaj explained, commission is adding on. See, recently in Satsang Swamiji told, right? Renunciation, for example. You should be unaffected by what you're dropping. You should be complete about it. And you should be able to move ahead in life. You should avoid sticking on and thinking, oh, I'll lose this if I leave this. It is never like that. You'll constantly expand in life as you move ahead. So you should be able to have both commission and omission in life. OK, adding to what Shakti Jaya told, see, that day Swamiji told na, one of his Mahans told that we can put one balloon in the ashram so that the people who go in Mysore Road will know that this, this is Nityananda Ashram. And Swamiji also told, we'll put one more balloon saying it is Shivaratri so that people will know that they are going to have Shivaratri celebration. <coughs> so what in this commission is, see, as per tradition, in those days they used to raise that tradition, they used to raise a Jodhastamba flag so that people will know that there's going to be function. Here, here what you're doing, we are going to do that and raising the balloon. It is only, com it is only commission, you are, you, are adding, you are adding something. But omission is something, like if you, if you remember Swamiji told that same day, he told there are few people, just because it is tradition, just because it is old, they just drop the thing and just, they'll just have the modern things. That is, omi that is omission. Like, just because it is old, something like incompletion. Due to incompletion, you drop something and go. That is, that is omission. That's what I understand. If karma is uh, what happened now, and you're th still thinking of out of it when you're uh, when you're going to the next section, for for example, you told that uh, um, you feel that you avoid speaking, you you do not speak properly in walk at the others, and still with the same incompletion, if you move on to the next session, which is completion session, that is karma. You told right when Swamiji speaks satsang, then. Uh, with the same understanding, contemplating and thinking about the same thing, if I move out of the hall and uh, next thing, how is it karma? Can you put your question more clear? I didn't understand exactly what you're asking. Sundareshwara Maharaj told that, uh, for example, now Vakya the Sadhas is happening, Math uh, I am incomplete about that I did, I did not speak properly in Vakya the Sadhas. I just collapsed everything and, and with the same incompletion, I'm walking out for the next session in Gurukul. So um, that is a karma for, ma, for, for me. Then so in satsang, whatever Swamiji speaks, I still contemplate about the same thing and move out to next session, next, suggest, next thing which I'm, go, I'm supposed to do. How is it karma? I don't think when after satsang, when you come out by uh, contemplating about what Swamiji told, I don't think that in that point you're incomplete with what you're doing. You are just going to the work and the same time you're doing contemplating, you're contemplating with uh, Swamiji's truths and going. I don't think that at that point you're incomplete. So I don't, I don't think that will make your karma, that that's becomes a part of karma. Just adding to what Adinatha Maharaj told, see, what I understand is you have to keep moving ahead in life. You can't sit with one thing. It is like, for example, what I understand is, you eat one morsel of rice, and when you're swallowing it, you're not feeling that you're missing it from your mouth. You're just putting it in, and you are going to get much more. It is like that, according to what I understand. And even after you come from satsang, you're not doing something useless. You're still contemplating what Swamiji told in satsang. And from your experience, when you come out of satsang, are you incomplete? About what Swamiji speaks, and 
that about your completions and contemplations. Sometimes as when Swamiji tells something, I feel that I am not able to do something. So I am powerless about that. Can I know that, do you really, you, you are asking for a solution for your problem, is it that? Yes. So in that case, what I will tell is, when you are in the satsang, listen to satsang completely, Swamji very clearly told that not, it is not that only you don't understand, none of us understand the whole thing to a level which he tells. As Swamji tells, as you keep listening to the satsang again and again, as you keep contemplating about it, there will be different levels of meanings that you will understand. So, instead of you feeling that I'm not able to understand, I'm not able to do anything of both what Swamji says, instead change your cognition to, yes, this is what is my perception at this point, let me decide for life and let me contemplate more about it and raise my understanding of what Swamji tells. That will be deciding for life. So, with this, we come to the conclusion of today's Vakyartha Sadhas. We'll finish with the Purna Mantra. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamataya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tat Sat Sarvam Rad Gurabhadu Gharma Namastu